I'm here to talk about a topic that affects millions of people, and it may affect the most of us as we age, and that is osteoarthritis. Among other things, there is one thing that we can all relate to, and that, unfortunately, is physical pain. So for one moment, please try, close your eyes, and imagine that you're in your own house, walking around, minding your own business, when suddenly you hit your pinky toe on a piece of furniture. So now take that intense pain and direct it to your knee. That's more or less how a patient with osteoarthritis feels the most of the time, and of course it affects his or her quality of life. Osteoarthritis can affect our knees, elbows, hips, neck, and really it's one of the 10 most disabling diseases. More than 250 million people are affected, and the most of them are above the age of 65. Many risk factors for osteoarthritis, such as age, gender, obese, uh, heavy exercise or heavy work. And the problem is that there is no treatment at all, but only pain management strategies. And as you can imagine, in an aging and increasingly obese population, this is going to be a real big problem. In order to understand what osteoarthritis is, we have to take a closer look to what amazing structures our joints are. And in my research, I focus on knee joints because they are the most affected by osteoarthritis, and really, they have extremely good lubrication. So what we have there, we have two bones facing one another, and on the surface, on the top of each bone, you have a very smooth membrane that helps the bones to move with low friction and extremely good lubrication. That membrane is called articular cartilage, and in combination with the fluid that is between those bones, everything is amazing. No man-made material can achieve that property of good lubrication. However, this is a normal knee joint. Annoying, right? So, an osteoarthritic knee joint is like those rusty hinges on the door that creak that you're trying to open. And just as rust, wear and tear can destroy the cartilage. So, in osteoarth as osteoarthritis progresses, what you have now, you have two bones rubbing against each other, and this creates pain, inflammation, and further disability. So, as I'm Greek, can you imagine what is the solution for everything? Exactly, it's olive oil. So, you take a bit of olive oil, you put it on those hinges, and the problem is fixed for a quite long period of time. And as olive oil has lipids, also our body has lipids, different though, and what, that is what I'm doing in my research also. I prepare lipid-based systems in order to find a better solution for osteoarthritis. Okay, of course, the idea didn't come from olive oil, okay? Uh, because the mechanism there is a bit different. So, for a quite long period of time, hyaluronic acid was the usual suspect for the good lubrication that our joints have. However, under heavy loads, such as in the cases when we walk, when we exercise, this is not true. However, hyaluronic acid, it is still used as a pain treatment in case of osteoarthritis, with many disadvantages, such as no long-lasting effect and pain because of the repeated injections that we have to do. Later, it was found out that on the surface, on the superficial layer of uh, our cartilage, there are some lipids called phospholipids. But what are phospholipids? They are like those molecules. You have a water-loving head and water-hating tails. And the magic is that around those water-loving heads, you have strongly bound water. Water molecules that actually create that fluid environment around the lipid, and you have this very, very good lubrication. And to give 
a small hint about what is coming next, those molecules are able to create bilayers. Okay? So after giving you the background, I will give you my goal. I want to combine extremely good lubrication with drug delivery in order to replace the treatment, the so far treatment for osteoarthritis. So what I'm doing, I'm taking those phospholipids and I create those tiny lipid bubbles, which are the na in the nanometer scale. And I will give you the classic example. What is a, a nanometer? Take one of your hair and divide the diameter 1,000 times. That's a nanometer. So we create those amazing bubbles that they are called liposomes, which are really well known in the drug delivery. Uh, and it, they are used in cancer and other diseases because they have unique properties, like you can incorporate inside them water-loving drugs and also in the bilayer that is created outside water-hating drugs. So you have an amazing system, safe, it can target different cells, different tissues, but until now, there are only three liposomal formulations on the market uh, for osteoarthritis, and you can deliver just anti-inflammatory drugs with no lubrication properties at all. The problem with the liposomes is that when you make them, you have an amazing solution at the beginning. You have your liquid and tiny bubbles here and there. But in less than 48 hours sometimes, those bubbles stick with each other, and now you have aggregates. So you cannot actually deliver your drug efficiently. The common strategy is to put around your liposomes molecules that are called polymers. Polymer, the word polymer, comes from the words many, which means the poly, which means many, and meros, which means parts. So um, a polymer, it's something that is made for many, many um, parts of the same thing. But the problem now is that those polymers, yes, they stabilize our liposomes, but the ones that they are used so far, they are not lubricating at all. So what we did, we formulate and we synthesize a new polymer which mimics that water-loving head of the phospholipids that I told you before. And now we made, uh, we put those polymers around our liposome like a shield, and now we have a stable liposome more than four months and a very good lubricant. And of course, we didn't stay there. We took those liposomes and we inject them directly in mice knee joints. Because when you intraarticularly um, inject um, your therapies, you are exactly in the heart of the problem. And what we found out is that our systems can stay in the mice knee joints 100 times longer than hyaluronic acid. And of course, now, after all those steps, we have a stable, safe, extremely good lubricant, and this can stay for a long time in the area of problem. After that, it's time to think big. And after having our lubricating system, now we want to go to the drug delivery part. So our goal is to encapsulate drugs and different molecules inside our liposomes in order this time to target the cartilage itself. Because in the cartilage, there are some cells that, in case of osteoarthritis, they produce bad molecules that destroy the cartilage. So we want to target those ones and stop the production of those bad molecules. Hopefully, we will stop osteoarthritis and we will have a two-in-one product, extremely good lubricant, and also drug delivery system which stops uh, the progression of osteoarthritis for making the lives of millions easier. So that's it, and thank you very much.
Hello. Uh, Eugenio from Haifa University. So first of all, thank you, actually. <laughs> because uh, so all the time I was being conditioned by your talk. So all the time while you were talking, I felt like a, an ache in the knee for some reason. <laughs> so this feels really urgent and relevant. So I was wondering, after, uh, let's say, the, um, the treatment was out, are there any, and this is a layman question, of course, because I don't know the first thing about it, but uh, are there any side effects uh, when, this, uh, when the treatment wears out? Uh, with, uh, okay. Is so, there any residue that remains in the kneecap that you need to be, that needs to be removed, this kind of stuff? No, because, okay, in case of hyaluronic acid that so far we have, uh, the side effects are mainly the pain because it doesn't stay so long in the joints. So what you do, you inject every other week, so you create pain. But it's something natural, so it's going to be metabolized. In case of our liposomes, also, they're, they're created by, by phospholipids. So again, those phospholipids are everywhere in our body. So it's something natural. So you will not have uh, side effects. This is going to be absorbed by the cartilage, absorbed by the synovial uh, cavity itself, so it's going to be no side effects from the product itself. Maybe the injection itself, it's going to be painful, but if you have something that you don't want, you don't have to inject every other week, but let's say every three, four months, hopefully, you know, at least you minimize this side effect. So we are trying to be better and better, and let's see. I hope it will, you know, reach the stage that we are going to say if it has side effects or no. And hi, Evgenia. Patricia from uh, the Technion. Uh, first of all, it was great presentation, really. Congratulations. Uh, I was actually wondering, uh, he was mentioning side effects, but uh, I wanted to focus in the new polymer that you were presenting. Mm -hmm. And if you guys have tested any possible toxicity out of the polymer itself. Mm -hmm. And as a second question, uh, when you are mentioning, because the idea is great, the, just the drug delivery system itself is already working as a part of the treatment, not only as a carrier, but then you're mentioning a drug that you want to put inside the liposomes. So I was just wondering if you've considered, like, if you have already an idea of which type of drug you want to put inside, because I guess I saw that you were putting nucleic acid as an option, and I guess that if you want to put nucleic acid, so the composition of the liposome maybe shouldn't be a liposome itself, and it should be more like an LMP as the one of the COVID-19 vaccine. Mm -hmm. So just those two things. Okay. So I will start from the second question. Yeah, like the target is to put something and to test either it can pass through the cartilage or no. In the beginning, like it's, we can put like, ins like insulin growth factors in order to see if we can reach the cartilage because there are different stages there. And then, yes, we can even go uh, to lipid nanoparticles in case of nucleic acids. But we will start first with a more, let's say, simple drug. And then by, by watching how our system is um, behaving, we will try to change uh, the composition and try to play around. However, the target is the cartilage itself. So this is uh, the beginning. Uh, regarding the toxicity of uh, the polymer itself, that it's around the liposome, of course, it's a great question because it, it is a lubricating uh, molecule because it mimics the phosphocholine um, water-loving head of the phospholipids. So, uh, actually, it, it has parts phosphocholine, okay? They're like the polymer itself. So, based on that, it's not cytotoxic. And we have tried it in vitro first, no toxicity, even in high concentrations. And when we injected in mice, we didn't see any side effects. So uh, based on that, in in vitro and preliminary in vivo um, tests, it's not cytotoxic. OK, so like you meant just like behavioral, let's say, test on the mice mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. that you didn't see any yeah, affection. Yeah, yeah. Not and like histological tests or something. No, no, not so far. Okay. But this is going to be 
uh, on the fu on future plans. Okay. Thank, <laughs> Thank you very you. much. Hi, Slava from Weizmann. Um, how does it work with this, uh, for example, hip transplants when you have this titanium head there? Do you still have uh, all the natural lubrication? Do you have uh, the pains associated with the friction? Wouldn't it be better to replace all the <laughs> everything with titanium? Yeah, very, very good question because if nothing works until then, you have to do the replacement and it's very painful and it needs time in order to get used to it etc etc so it's not the best option but you have to do it at some point probably uh, however we can use those systems also there because the friction is still there so in order to relieve pain you can give those liposomes in order to maintain the lubricating environment because then you don't know, you don't speak about the normal joints, but you speak again friction on parts that they are not um, natural. So still you need low friction, you need good lubrication, and you can uh, give liposomes for that reason. But yes, it's painful. Okay, thank you very much, Evgenia. Thank you.